going to talk about this, the bubble wrap in the greenhouse. What kind of difference has it made, if any, and what's it been like, okay? Now, the thing is, I put this up because I fully expected that we would be in proper winter weather by now. Um, you guys know I keep a gardening journal and I record everything, the weather, what I'm growing, what's happening, what did well, what didn't, all that kind of stuff. And I recommend that you should keep a gardening journal. Um, but the problem is, for the last four or five years, we've had a first proper frost around the 21st of October. Um, we're in December in a couple of days and we still haven't had that. We haven't even been on zero temperature yet. So um, I bubble wrapped the greenhouse, worrying about the frost and they haven't happened yet. So, yeah. So what we're going to do instead then is we're going to do a bit of an update of so far and what it's been like. And then it means, bonus, we get to come back and do more of these kind of updates later on as the temperature changes. So let's look at it as the positive. We get to do more of them. Okay, first thing then, what I did was I put out a call and I asked you guys to give me your questions. So, let me see. Because I thought, it's fine for me to waffle, but what do you guys actually want to know? So here's the first thing then. Why on earth did you do it and was it worth the effort? Right, okay. So, why did we do it? Basically, again, I mentioned the frosts. Right, okay. This hydrangea is really special to me. It was a housewarming present from our friends David and Valerie and it's really kind of special to us. And every year I watched it just get burnt to a crisp. Like the branches get burnt all the way right back, well the stems, sorry, the stems get burned all the way back down and all the buds that had just formed were getting burnt by the frost. So I was then having to go in and really hard prune it. So it means it never really got much bigger than kind of that size and these things should be huge um so i tried wrapping it in fleece and all that kind of thing and it made no difference now hands up that could just be i pants at wrapping things i admit that but then last year i brought it into the greenhouse and i thought you know in the greenhouse that should protect it it wasn't as badly damaged i will say but it still did get some quite bad frost damage and i thought it's in a greenhouse, seriously? So I thought again, this year, the bubble wrap is my experiment to try and beat the frost. Okay, so that is why I'd hoped I could tell you all about that by now, but we're just going to have to wait on that winter update. So that's why I did it. Now, was it worth the faff of doing it? I need to be honest here, possibly because there were two of us, okay? It was more faff to empty the greenhouse so that we could do it than it was to actually put the bubble wrap up. Quite possibly because we used all these little clips and things and they made it a lot easier. We weren't fighting with tape all the time. So that, actually, I have to say, it wasn't that much of a faff. Not as bad as I was expecting anyway. Yeah, so... Yeah, I'm going to say that. I don't think it was that much faff, so yes, it was worth it. So far, we'll see how that progresses and how we go on with that one. Okay, so the next question I got... Mm, 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 mm. I can't answer this one. Does it stop the frost? I don't know. You'll have to come back and find out. Um, does it really impact light levels? Oh, that's a really, really good one. Right, okay. I'm saying that's a really good one because I have been told it impacts the light level, so I am quite anxious about this, okay? Um, and as a photographer and a videographer, light is a big topic for me. Um, and if you guys were ever to watch behind the scenes footage of me filming these videos, you'll see the amount of effort it takes to try and combat the light. Because when you're outside in natural light, you can't control it. You get really bright, really dark, really bright, and it affects things, okay? So... This, I'm going to say, and I'm going to use photography words, it's like having a diffuser, okay? So it is stopping some of the light, but as you can see, it's not making it darker in here. And case in point, I'm actually still using a ND filter on my lens. So if I do this, you can see I'm kind of still using the whole sunglasses on the lens thing for the camera. There we go. Because, um, you know, you guys don't want the rest of the video in the dark, do you? <laughs> so, yeah, so it diffuses the light, which means it softens it and you don't get those harsh, bright lights, but it's still really, really light in here. Now, I mentioned that when I talked 
last week when we sowed these carrot seedlings and I said one of the things I'm thinking about is is it going to be light enough in here for these seedlings? So I'm watching them to see if they do that whole leggy thing where they start all reaching in one direction trying to get to the light. So far, so good. So again, I will keep updating you guys on this, but so far the light actually doesn't seem to make any difference. Uh, we are now in the proper cloudy winter-ish type weather here. There is no proper sunlight anymore. And not bad, is it? Can you give us a wee temperature comparison with outside? <laughs> Can you Do you have the stats for this brackets? I bet you do. That's JB from Naturally JB. Yes, JB, you know me well. I'm a total stats monkey. So you guys know that I installed my little Bluetooth sensor push thermometer in here okay I, I i'll shove the videos up here so up here you're going to find the me doing the carrots you'll find the one where i installed this and talked about temperature in your greenhouse and the fact that most of us are actually measuring that wrong okay but what this means is it is bluetooth and i get wee graphs on my phone so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to shove a wee graph on the screen and you can see this right so this graph is from Back in the beginning, when I first put the bubble wrap up, okay, those days we were still getting quite sunny days. And I found on those sunny days, even though it was mid-October, the greenhouse was still sometimes getting right up there and hitting the 30 degrees C, okay, in October. So that was like, whoa, that's not normal for me. I was used to it being around the 18 mark. So first things first then, if it's sunny and the greenhouse can generate heat then it was definitely doing that and holding on to it but the other big thing is if you look at the spikes from beforehand okay we were getting some quite big spikes of daytime nighttime it was quite a lot of change and the whole point of the greenhouse is you want to keep some level of kind of control over those mad spikes at either end. There's a word for it and I can't remember the word now. Sorry, I'm just going to try and describe it. Um, but what I found with the bubble wrap is obviously we still get some elements of the whole spiking thing because, you know, we don't have heating in here. But it's reduced those peaks and troughs to a much lesser extent, you know, of either ends. Oh, I'm not doing a very good job of describing that, am I? Basically, it's not consistent. That's the word. It's not giving me that consistent, constantly the same temperature, probably because I don't have heating during the night. But what it's doing is it's quite clearly reducing the amount of heat that I'm losing overnight. It's, it's doing that insulation thing, which is awesome. So, yeah, I'm definitely seeing a difference, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to flick through the graph a bit, do, 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 and we're going to look at, temperatures when it was getting a wee bit colder. So this is from a few weeks back now, about four or five weeks back. And I just want to show you a couple of things here. You can see here, we were kind of consistently getting around the five, six degrees Celsius during the night. Okay. But what you can see is when it's that temperature outside, the greenhouse is comfortably sitting at about the eight degrees. So again, it's that couple of degrees. And now it's more or less been sort of three degrees, four degrees at night. And you can see again, we're sitting up at that five or six degrees. Last night, however, last night it was down to the two, which it was pretty cold last night. So I suspect this is the proper winter coming now. I can feel it in my hands today because I've been outside and my hands are all stiffened up. My joints are stiffening. So that's a proper alert that the weather's changing for me. Yes, because I'm actually older than you guys think and I struggle with my joints. Anyways, but like I say, it was hitting down at the two last night. The greenhouse, look, the greenhouse was still sitting at the four. So it does seem to work, okay? It's only a couple of degrees. And for you guys, some of you guys, if you're not already got a greenhouse, you may be thinking in terms of the advertising and greenhouse advertisers talk about extending your season, okay? Greenhouses don't make it tropical. They don't make it summer all year round. That's not how it works. It's about that grabbing a few degrees here and there. And for me, it's that grabbing that few degrees here or there and will that mean we can stay above the frost level in here? Okay, so I will totally keep you guys up to date on that one. But hopefully, so far it's looking good. Fingers crossed with that one. Uh, do, do, do. Okay, what is it like to pop the bubbles? I'm going to disappoint you here, right? 
this isn't like your normal bubble wrap you get for like sending parcels in the mail and stuff. This stuff is super, super thick, okay? It's super, super tough. It's actually really, really difficult to pop the bubbles on it. They're really so reinforced, okay? This stuff is what's called triple layered. So you've got your big, bigger than usual bubbles because that's what you want because you're looking for that air insulated layer. But then on either side of that, you've got another layer of the plastic and it's then got UV coating on it as well. So that's why this stuff can last for three or four seasons because it's super strong, super thick. It's not normal bubble wrap. So unfortunately, it doesn't do that poppy thing. If you do manage to burst one of them, it just kind of lets the air out. It doesn't make the noise. Sorry to disappoint. Okay, so like I say, it's a, a bit of an update on what I've got so far for you this year. Okay, I can't really update you on proper temperatures yet because we haven't had them yet here. We've had a couple of days where I've been out and I've been out long enough that it's got proper cold, which is why you've seen me wrapped up. But if you noticed, I might have a hat and scarf and maybe even gloves on, but I didn't have a jacket on because it's not properly cold enough to need the jacket as well yet. Um, and today my hands are cold, but the rest of me is okay today. So there we go. So that is the greenhouse and the bubble wrap. Now, there's something I want to talk about, okay? Nobody else asked this, but this was my concern. I worried about this. All through summer, I was noticing on those days where the greenhouse was getting really warm during the day and then it was dropping to that really cold temperature at night, I noticed I got a lot of condensation on the glass. So I really worried. When I put the, the bubble wrap up, I'm obviously covering up all the venting options. I've taken the auto vents off because you guys know I spoke about it in another video. These auto vents get triggered by the sunlight heating the cylinders up. So it can be cold inside the greenhouse, but they'll still open. So I disengaged them so that I wasn't losing excess heat. But also, we're into proper stormy territory now and I don't want these open and then big gusts of wind grabbing at it. I think it'll be fine, but it's just in case. But that means there is no ventilation in the greenhouse now. So I worried about that condensation and what was going to happen. Because if you've got a lot of moisture in your greenhouse, you do risk getting moulds and mildews and all that kind of nastiness in here. And let's be honest, I'm probably going to shock a lot of you guys that are out in the really, really warm areas of the world. Um, in fact, I saw somebody this week talking about how they had six degree humidity and that's what they were trying to garden in. Let me just tell you what the humidity is just now, just so I can give you it properly exact. Um, it's currently 87 degrees humidity here, and I have seen it going up to the 90s. No, no, no word of a lie, because Scotland is an incredibly wet country. It rains a lot here, and even when it's not raining, we're not generally baking in sunlight to then dry that off. Okay, so. Given that it is such a wet climate here, I do worry a lot about the moisture. And this is something I've noticed, okay? I'm not getting the condensation anymore on the windows, okay? None. But what I am noticing is when the ground gets wet in here, it doesn't dry. So you can see that just now. You can see I watered about four or five days ago in here now. And where it's hit the floor, it's still actually wet on that floor. There are areas around the edge of the greenhouse frame where the water does come in if it's rained because it's not sealed, which is fine. That's totally normal. Don't worry about that. But what I'm noticing is the bubble wrap overlaps that and under the bubble wrap is wet because it, it isn't drying. So that is my concern. So this is a thing that I'm going to keep an eye on and I'll update you guys on is the, the whole moisture levels in here and does it affect anything? Okay. Um, yeah. So apart from that at the minute, that is what's going on in here. And we will come back and we'll have updates, including the winter growing updates that are nothing to do with the bubble wrap. But you guys know I've planted foxglove seeds, crocosmia seeds. I've got petunia cuttings. I've got cuttings from the salvia. So I'll update you guys on all that and how it's going and the carrots and let you know if the seeds have sprouted, uh, if any of the seedlings are looking a bit poorly. And you get to watch as my hydrangea will be dropping all its leaves because it's starting to go dormant. It's just one of those things, nothing we can do about it. So yeah, so 
This has been Eli in the unheated, bubble-wrapped greenhouse. And I've now got stuff to do because, you know, the garden doesn't tend itself. And I've got garlic to plant and raise beds to go and refresh and all that kind of stuff. So have fun, guys. Check out all these videos if you want to see more of what's going on because I know you'll be missing things in the winter. And I will see you very shortly.